Let us begin this edition by informing you that President Paul Kagame on Sunday participated in Kigali's Coffee Day initiative that encourages residents to be physically fit and remain healthy. The head of state was accompanied by the Minister of Sports and the mayor of Kigali was seen walking and visiting different parts of the city, including the Coffee Zone in Bidjogo, where he interacted with local residents. The First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, also participated in the Car Free Zone activities and was accompanied by Miss Rwanda winners and others who have participated in the beauty pageant over the years. We had our regular uh, uh, sport per, that is happening uh, every uh, two weeks uh, a month. And uh, as you know, this has been uh, initiated by the, His Excellency the President of the Republic and uh, with the aim of, of course, having uh, a healthy people in the health uh, country. And the uh, city of Kigali today uh, was very happy to again host His Excellency and his family uh, joining us, the residents of the city of Kigali, in these uh, 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 spots, uh, particularly with went through some of the main roads in the city of Kigali that are being used for, to host the, uh, the cafe day and the sport. Uh, we also uh, consider the, the extension of uh, some of the roads in the city facilities and also some infrastructure projects that are uh, being implemented in the city, which can also be used for other purposes. So we visited, uh, we towered around the cafe zone in. Uh, video go that has been known as a, 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 you know, a slum in a way, uh, but uh, currently it has been improved. It has been very much improved. Uh, we've uh, constructed uh, uh, roads. Uh, it's in, under a project that was uh, dedicated to upgrade these kind of informal settlements. So we finished this close to nine kilometer roads and also some uh, water channels. Uh, that also have uh, pedestrian walkways uh, amounting 6.9 kilometer and uh, a dedicated, a specific dedicated uh, cafe zone in uh, Bidiogo, well known as uh, Tever or Green Tea Zone, uh, that is already bringing together not only the residents in Bidiogo but also some other people coming from different corners of the city of Kigali and even from other provinces. So the residents over there were very happy to host HE, His Excellency, and also uh, uh, we could see that actually the place is uh, it's becoming a destination for, for the nation. The government of Rwanda has been commended for its efforts in fighting gender-based violence and calls have been made for people not to further victimize victims who speak out about what they were forced to endure. Advocates for women's rights note that even though much has been done to encourage victims of gender-based violence to speak out about their ordeal, there is still much to be done about how society treats them. I'm happy about the fact that women and girls are speaking out because it helps to make the problem known, leading to the adoption and implementation of policies which is good, but there is a problem with how the Rwandan society treats victims. Intellectuals are being victimized, and the perpetrators are also intellectuals who do everything possible to keep victims quiet, enslaving them in this way. To encourage victims to speak out, we must facilitate them to do so with friends and family willing to listen so that they can tell us what happened to them. Such victimization is also a problem in the workplace. Some accept it just to stop being harassed or maybe to save their jobs, but it is wrong and people should know that an employer who sexually harasses employees is committing a crime. Some girls have a really hard time at work 
because of employers who demand such things from them. But I urge them to preserve and not give in because we must all navigate the storms that come our way, the things I may call tribulations. During the Congress meeting of the RPF in Otani party on Saturday, President Paul Kagame also touched on this issue. How did that thing that calls itself a beauty pageant come into existence? Does it not have regulations and is it not regulated? How can a person come up with a scheme to bring together some girls and lure them with things and exploit them, using them himself and then selling them to the highest bidder? Our children should, however, learn to say no and also report such things, just like that one among many who refused. Sadly, she was threatened for doing so. And these sort of things happen on regular jobs as well, in ministries and other institutions, where people are promoted only after they have, you know what I mean, I don't have to elaborate. In the military, a person is promoted in rank only after pleasing those higher up. No, it is really bad. It's really bad. The head of state stressed that this sort of behavior cannot and will not be tolerated. If you somehow manage to escape the reach of the law, then God will punish you for what you did. Let us, however, work to ensure that as few cases as possible slip through and those caught are punished because this is not part of our culture or something human beings should be doing. Let me remind you that it is the right of women to develop and men should not be thanked for it. It doesn't matter if it is a married woman or a young single one. She reserves the right to develop and not just because a man allowed it. His Excellency Paul Kagame called for professionalism in the workplace and for the proper channels to be established that encourage victims to speak up when such things occur and not fear reprisals. Members of the private sector across the country say that although the COVID-19 pandemic affected their activities and some jobs were lost, they have stepped up their efforts to create more thanks to the recovery fund set up by the government. Across the country, the population is engaged in a variety of business activities, construction, agriculture and many other small businesses. Business owners are happy that the COVID-19 cases have reduced and many activities resuming, even though some people lost their jobs. We now have software that helps me and the kids as well because they study online at home and do research while interacting with their colleagues. When COVID-19 first hit, the first challenge was the rising prices on the market. And those who were vulnerable felt it more as the price of sugar increased from 1,000 to 2,100 francs. I am thinking of a new activity that can generate income and be self-reliant without having to wait on the government. Labor unions have continued to advocate for jobless workers and to train the private sector in job creation programs. Anyone with employees should not take it lightly. They have rights and they produce results for the employer. And the employer can't achieve those results without them. So there is a need for employers to be taught on the rights of employees because one of the things we urge employees to do is to fulfill their responsibilities. The private sector plays a key role in creating jobs. Mukarube Gazalfat owns a university that offers tourism and technology courses, UTB, which has signed a contract with Qatar to provide staff members of graduates that pass the exams are going to work in the hotels of this country. She added that she also signed other agreements with the Emirates to send young people who had taken different courses in various universities here in Rwanda and that she would be required to train them and they will go there for various jobs. This entrepreneur and her colleagues say they continue to support the seven-year government's plan to achieve its 1.5 million job creation goal.
As we elected the president, he made his promises to be implemented during the seven-year mandate, including combating unemployment, which is why I came up with the idea of job opportunities abroad. So I encourage every Rwandan citizen to ensure that the vision of His Excellency be achieved faster and successfully. In that same light, I've signed contracts with Qatar and three other institutions in Emirates, as they have already started interviewing about 60 candidates that we are going to send there. As May 1st marks International Labor Day, the Ministry of Public Service and Labor says that the world in Rwanda celebrates this day while facing the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the hiking of market prices, as this has also led to the economic downturns. Fidel Abimana, acting permanent secretary in the Ministry of Public Service and Labor, says the government has stepped up its efforts to help the private sector and sensitize schools to teach the necessary courses in the labor market in order to reduce unemployment. We urge those in the education sector to help us provide knowledge that is needed on the job market and parents to encourage children to go to school and offer them guidance in choosing courses that will benefit them in line with current global opportunities. According to the Ministry of Public Service and Labor, unemployment has risen sharply from 17% in 2017 to 21.5% in 2022. The celebration of Labor Day was themed the future of work with a common goal. Rondon Tea and Coffee have ranked top, scoping the best of the best accolade at the recent auction held in Mombasa, Kenya, also dominating on a global scale. Now, this comes as a timely motivation for Rondon Tea and Coffee traders who are eagerly awaiting the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, jerrying up for participants of the conference scheduled for June this year. Isabel Masozera has this report. entrepreneurs from all over the country have encouraged local tea and coffee growers to drink random coffee and tea and to sell it to locals at a lower price. Some of the attendees who stood at the tea and coffee shops enjoyed the taste of the drink, which was usually enjoyed by foreigners. Stamford Ruva Mogomia and Mazi Timothy are some of the investors in the coffee and tea business who are pleased with the increase in the number of Rwandans drinking tea and coffee, which they say will attract more participants to Rwandan coffee and tea at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Yeah, I would say that uh, we are very much excited uh, for this uh, coming uh, Chogam Summit. It's going to be a very uh, opportune moment for, for us, people who are in, in the coffee uh, sector, especially the coffee houses, uh, and also as roasters as, as well. So uh, our coffee is known globally to be one of the best uh, coffee because uh, of uh, uh, flavors. Uh, our coffee has, you know, our coffee has a fruity taste and also has a variety of uh, other flavors. So it's going to be a very good opportunity for us to showcase what we have. And also, since we are the one who produced that best, best coffee, now the delegates, all the guests, are going to have a good moment or a good chance to buy now that coffee uh, uh, right from the source. Ruta Isire Aaron, a sales and marketing manager at Gorilla Coffee, a Rwandan farmer's coffee company, says the factory now specializes in coffee, freshness, and packaging. He added that the company now creates smaller, affordable packages that everyone can enjoy, and they're even exporting them to other countries. Uh, we are in two business of value addition, and we... Uh, we are growing from 0% to 5% uh, uh, now value addition of coffee exported from Rwanda. So uh, Rwanda Farmers Coffee Company is a uh, proud contributor to that. We are uh, bringing in more forex, forex currency to, to Rwanda and we are also giving good price to the farmers who we are buying green coffee as raw material, doing value addition and processing. We have seen the machines and we export fully finished product uh, to the export market. We have started with a few countries, but now we have reached 30 countries uh, exported to in the last year, and uh, uh, we are looking at doing 50 countries in the next five years, 
uh, with the new innovation of instant coffee, we know uh, it's a turnaround product. Uh, we have been testing a lot of instant coffee on the market, which are not good. But so far, Gorilla Coffee Instant Coffee uh, that we have launched on the market since last month is uh, uh, being trusted as the best quality coffee you can find as instant coffee product. We are encouraging all the hotels, uh, all the hospitality companies that are using instant coffee in their rooms, in their shops, in their shops, so they can choose Gorilla Coffee for its quality and convenience in usage. The chairperson of the Federation of Rwanda Tea Farmers Association says that the prices spiked on the international market and so did the number of farmers. At a recent auction in Kenya, Rwandan tea topped the list at $2.83, while the next in Kenya was priced at $2.53 per kilo. Isabel Masozera, RTV News. Survivors of the genocide against the Tutsi of what used to be the prefecture of Giseni have asked that evidence of the genocide against the Tutsi that happened in Commune Rouge should be put in the memorial, memorial site of this area because people who planned and implemented the genocide were from that location which led to appalling atrocities being implemented quickly such that by the end of April in 1994 most of the Tutsi in Giseni and surrounding areas had been killed. Olive Neti has this report. Victims of the genocide against the Tutsi were commemorated by people from different places of what used to be the prefecture of Yesenyi. Because during the genocide in the areas of Kibirira, Bigogwe and other places were marked with insecurity, which led people from those places to take refuge in the town of Yesenyi and were killed. Teogen Hayomba, a survivor of the genocide against the Tutsi in Giseni, say that at the start of the genocide, many Tutsi were killed and those who were hiding were deceived that the massacre was over and that nobody would be killed again. At that time, they came out of the hideout, which led to the death of many people. Another date that I will never forget is the 15th of April. On Hassan's vehicle, a loudspeaker was put up as a strategy to make people come out of hiding. They were saying that a Hutu who will kill a Tutsi will also be killed. So everyone who was hiding, a Tutsi told the person that now there is peace. And at that time, people came out and they were killed. The 15th of April was a very bad date because the Tutsi in Giseni were killed while it was promised that they would not be killed again. Many were killed in Komin Rouge and were thrown into pits that were digged there. Currently in that place, there is a memorial site that holds about 5,200 people. Basing on this history, the researcher Tom Dahiro notes that the memorial site of Komin Rouge should carry evidences that marked the genocide against the Tutsi in what used to be the prefecture of Giseni, because most of the people who planned and implemented the genocide are from this area, which gave power to the genocide that happened in that place. <laughs> Let's take the example of journalists from the Kangura print media establishment who worked here as part of a group called Giseni Info. Those who started and were the leaders of Seder were from here. President Habjarimana, who was the mastermind of this, was also from this area. Nator Senji Yumva was also from Giseni. Simeon Bichindi, who sang songs that motivated people to kill Tutsi, as they were dancing and happy was from this place as well, what used to be degraded a commune. Particularly this memorial site should have all of that so that people who visit it will not even have to ask. They will know that people were killed and also know who killed them. Donatil Mukabarisa, the Speaker of the Chamber of Deputies, requested residents to learn from that bad story and take the lead in preserving the achievements of Rwanda by fighting deniers and negators of the genocide against the Tutsi. 
youth, I continue to request you to keep fighting against the denying of the genocide against the Tutsi by showing the truth because you know it and you are also taught about it. So you must be relentless in refuting the lies of others. Please don't stay quiet on social media sites. During the commemoration ceremony, the body of Domitil Mukam Tara that was found in Muhira cell in Rujerero sector was honorably buried and wreaths were laid on graves where bodies of the victims of the genocide against the Tutsi are buried in the memorial site of Commune Rouge. Olive Nete, RTV News. On Saturday, the Rwandan community of South East Queensland in Australia gathered for the 28th annual commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsi. The event started with a walk to remember. The former part of the program was commenced with a prayer, a minute of silence and the sparking of the light of hope with over 100 candles turned on. Among those in attendance was the High Commissioner of Rwanda to Singapore, Australia, New Zealand and Indonesia, Jean Dodier, Oui Hangane and Michael Wu. Michael Wu spoke about his ex experience as an expatriate at the time of the genocide and the impact of external political forces. He also commended the country, government and its people for their recovery and their enormous and inspiring effort to move past such a traumatic point in time to become the country Rwanda is today through homegrown solutions. The event was concluded with a speech from the High Commissioner who expressed his hope for the future, but also a warned of the growing challenge of genocide denial and the need for all to unite and fight the trend. And that story sums up tonight's bulletin. That's all for tonight. Thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Mutoni. Good night.